Hello! In this video, I'd be ranting about SSD and using it for caching. Well, it's a bit old in regards to innovation, but it really is still very useful. Spoiler alert. Anyway, yeah, in today's age, it's still very useful. And especially for those who, uh, even for those people who already has an SSD, but using their hard drive as an extra storage, like to store your media files and other files, right? and for games and stuff like that but the thing there is um, the speed by using a portion of your SSD to be used for caching for your hard drive will significantly increase its performance and another thing uh, this is also useful for people who are under budget um, um, I'm sorry let me just go back real quick um, we normally install our windows in the faster drive right so most of the time people install their windows in the ssd and uh, some of the important files or applications are stored in the ssd as well and basically we just use the hard drive for storing extra files like medias and some other games that we don't uh, oftenly play uh, stuff like that but again using a portion of your current SSD to act uh, to use that for caching for the hard drive will significantly significantly increase its performance yeah so another thing is this is uh, also useful for people who are under budget like uh, like in my case uh, the the example that I'd be showing you guys later on is I only have uh 120 gigabyte of ssd but i have an extra two terabytes of hard disk drive and take note the hard drive that i'm using that i'd be showing you only has 5400 rpm so just imagine how slow it is if if you run windows on it all right so i won't be bombarding you guys with uh benefits of using your SSD for caching but I'll just give you a couple more um, regardless if it's uh, regardless if your hard drives a 5400 or 7200 uh, RPM hard drive um, using your SSD for caching will still greatly increase its performance why um, I'd be showing you how slow a uh, hard drive is launching multiple applications uh, later on uh, the idea here is with a spinning hard drive, with a hard drive, the disk inside it will just spin, right? And you have a reading needle to, to read the data. And if you're accessing multiple applications, and it'll take some time uh, for the hard drive to cope up. That's all I'm saying. And using your S, that's why SSDs are a lot faster than hard drives because there are no moving parts. One last thing is, uh, again, this is useful for people who are on their budget, like me, the, the, the example that I'd be showing you guys. Um, let's say I can, I can only afford an SSD, uh, a really small SSD, uh, small capacity SSD, uh, but I need a lot of storage. So I'd be buying a 120, 120 gigabyte SSD and a 2 terabyte uh, hard drive and the thing here is um i'm not the only one using the computer and it really is difficult to handle people and tell them where they could uh, store and save their files to or at next thing you know your ssd is filled up already so in this configuration uh if you guys only have a very small capacity ssd but you have an another large capacity hard drive uh, it'll be better, it'll be a better option if you guys will be installing your Windows to the hard drive and use the small size SSD as your for caching. And yeah, uh, without further ado, I'd be showing you guys a bunch of numbers first, then I'd be showing you how to install Primo Cache. Oh, and again, uh, there are a lot of soft, no, not really again, I, I forgot to mention, uh, there are a lot of softwares uh, for caching uh, in Intel we have Intel's uh, rapid storage technology in AMD we have store MI uh, I can't really show an example for Intel because my motherboard doesn't support RAID 
and for some reason my Aorus uh, SSD is not supported by AMD Store MI and what I can show you guys is Primo Cache uh, because I, I'm already subscribed to it uh, I bought that way back 2016 when I first bought this one here Windows 8.1 uh, I think it's 2014 or 2016 uh, it's been a while and do take note that if you go for the third-party software solution uh, most of them require a subscription fee uh, it's a lifetime kind of thing or perpetual subscription so uh, if you ask me it's really worth it and uh, yeah so Without further ado, I'd be showing you the numbers first, then the installation. So here it is. Um, before I launch anything, my, my, my computer just started uh, back up from a cold boot. And I just want to show you guys how it performs. Again, the hard drive that I'm using or the Windows that's installed in the hard drive uh, is on a 5400 RPM hard drive. And I just want to show you how fast or rather how slow it is in launching uh, take note launching launching multiple applications at the time so I'd be launching Netflix a bit of no Netflix uh, Safari or Edge and Spotify there you go it's taking a while Netflix hasn't loaded still Spotify is not here still. Edge launched pretty fast. And what happened to Spotify? Spotify. Yep, I think it tang already. So this is where I'm at right now. So that's that. Spotify is not here still. I exited uh, the Netflix. It's and just now. So it took a while to launch those three apps. But again, this is spinning hard drive, so very understandable. And it's a 5400 RPM as well. So sorry, my uh, my phone got disconnected from the network and my camera is running through it anyway um i just want to show you the results i got uh from the tests i've done and uh here it is uh first one is with this one here uh i won't be uh get I, I won't dwell too much on what these mean uh, just google it on your own <laughs> and basically um, what we want to consider here is this what the first one here and the random uh, for uh, KB bytes uh, here and this one here anyway um, this first one is the result I got from running crystal disk mark on my ssd 120 gigabyte from gigabytes sata ssd um, windows was installed to it as well and these are the results um, it's pretty good for a budget ssd if you know what i mean and the next one is with a hard drive Uh, with the hard drive acting as the secondary drive, I only use it to store my media files, all my non-important stuff or extra files, if you may. And uh, yeah, uh, on comparing these two, definitely the SSD is faster. And next one is my hard disk drive with Windows installed to it. It's lower compared to the other one, considering that Windows is running uh, with system files running in the background. Uh, the The results is pretty. The result is pretty understandable. And uh, 
distance. There you go. The This fourth one here is with L1 disabled. With Primo Cash, I, I'm not too sure with AMD Store MI and or Intel's uh, rapid storage. With Intel, the thing's running on RAID. So it's pretty much different in, in this scenario. But with AMD Store MI, I'm not pretty sure if Store MI utilizes L1 caching as well. Uh, basically, when you say L1, it's, uh, it means that you're using the system's RAMs uh, for caching as well. And with L2, it means you're using SSD for caching. Uh, with this fourth image, with L1 disabled, it means I'm only using L2. I'm only using SSD for caching. With SSD for caching, uh, performance jump is very noticeable with the read performance. Uh, why is that? Do take note that um, I have my OS installed in the hard drive. So with a bump, with a significant increase in read, um, it's pretty good increase in performance if you know what I mean. So yeah, those are the numbers here and lastly this one is with l1 enabled it's fast <laughs> now do take note that i have a 16 gigabyte of ram installed in my system in dual channel with 16 gigabytes um i i lowered the l1 cache to two gigabytes i don't want to uh give more ram into it because uh, i have the ssd for my l2 cache to do that for me uh the l1 i just made it two gigabytes just to you know to give it an uh an extra oomph if you know what i mean so utilizing l1 as you can see helps a lot so if you have a uh, maybe eight gigabytes of ram maybe a lot one gigabyte for l1 caching or you could disable it you could get pretty good pretty good performance bump as well so it really is up to you or it really is up to your system configuration so all i'm saying is if you have the extra ram uh it's it really is a good idea to to allot some of it for caching and as you guys could see it's really nice and i'd be showing you guys how quick launching applications multiple applications uh is later on as well and so those are the read write test results and here are the timings for the timings um for the timings uh this is in regards to booting uh boot time uh the, the time it takes for the system to boot up from from the moment it finishes post uh right after the system test time will start and yeah so for ssd um first boot it takes uh 32.31 seconds for the first restart it takes a bit longer it took 34.57 and 33.42 seconds uh, this is with uh, Windows installed into my SSD and running on it. And with Windows installed to my 5400 RPM hard drive, for the first boot, it took 2 minutes and 10 seconds. And for the second and third, first, second, and third restarts, uh, 1.41 seconds, 1 minute 43, 1 minute 40. Um, do take note, windows uh, utilizes caching as well that's why with the first boot uh when i say first boot it's in regards to uh what i meant there was uh it's coming from a cold boot from the computer completely shut down uh on the first boot it takes a while longer a lot longer than the restart because the computer utilizes caching as well so restarting a computer will take uh faster uh compared to cold start 
and yeah and with primo cache installed uh this one i knew i was utilizing l1 and l2 caching with l1 set to two gigabytes of ram uh allotted to it and with uh, about 90 or yeah i think it was 90 gigabytes of ssd for the l2 cache yeah so for primo cache for the first uh or cold boot it took me a minute and 30 seconds um a minute and 30 seconds this was on my first cold boot with the primo cache installed and for the very first time i launched or booted my computer it took a minute and 30 seconds to to complete its boot sequence and for the first restart, 1 minute 35, second restart, 53 seconds, third restart, 52, fourth restart, 49 seconds. And second start from cold boot, it took 55 seconds, third cold boot, 44 seconds, and from fourth boot onwards, it took me 38 seconds. Yeah, 38 seconds on... Prior to making this video, uh, I got 36. Anyway, it varies from 36.5 to uh, 42 seconds. It varies there, but it averages at 38 seconds. Most of the time, 38 seconds. I only got 42 seconds at that one time because I had a Windows update going on. And anyway, it's averaging 38 seconds with Primo Cache L1 and L2 allotted for caching. And yeah. So that's the result, or those are the results. Uh, I'm sorry, I forgot to mention. Um, the thing with Primo Cache, if you guys noticed, uh, every time I cycle my computer or boot up my computer, it takes faster, right? Same thing goes with launching applications. Thing with uh, Primo Cache is, the, the thing with caching rather, um, the way it handles things is it stores the the process uh for you so that next time you run it it'll run faster uh in this case uh primo cache was able to store the information already uh so the next time i booted my windows up it took faster same thing with launching applications if uh running the same applications for a while it'll store that into the ssd uh so that next time you run it it'll run faster and in regards to file transfers uh it has it makes it utilizes the ram or the ssd regardless right uh it utilizes the cache so that i want to co copy a file to my hard drive right so to to make the file transfer faster it'll store it first to your l1 or l2 cache and then so that it'll be faster or it'll be fast and then in the background it'll transfer the file onto your hard drive so the obvious um downside of this is if your trend if if you get a power interruption somewhere in between when files being transferred from the cache onto your hard drive and you get a power interruption in between your files could get corrupted so uh, one uh, one tip i could give you is if you're running uh, this thing um, or utilizing this thing better utilize a ups as well so that your uninterrupted power uninterruptible power supply so that you could avoid those kind of uh nuisance and yeah um now i'd be showing you how uh, i'd be showing you guys how to install it uh, it's already saved into my hard drive actually but uh, i'll run from scratch so primo cache it's right in there primo cache the first i'm using bing <laughs> who uses bing and primo cache the first one here from romix software run that and free download so you could download this free trial uh i think it's for like a month or two weeks 15 days or a month uh, i'm not too sure so run that download after you download it run it and uh, 
Primo Cash. Set it up. Don't forget to read this, it's very important. Just kidding. And yeah. I have to restart my computer now, so see you guys in a bit. Okay, so my computer just booted back up and it took a while. And first, before running Primo Cash software, uh, you want to prepare this one here first. So type in here uh, on the lower left, on the run uh, portion here, uh, format, disk format. Here it is. So just type in disk format and it'll show you the result here up top click on that and you'd get this one here i'll just one run uh, i'll just uh explain one scenario first let's say um your windows is already installed in a an ssd with a good capacity already but uh you bought uh another hard drive or you have uh, another hard drive that's use that's used for storage let's say you have a uh, uh, two gigabyte or two terabytes of ssd with you with windows already installed into it and you have an extra hard drive uh, a four or a two another two terabyte or another four terabyte hard drive used for games or whatever so here in disk zero will be your ssd right your your high capacity ssd with your windows installed to it and here is another disk for your hard drive your extra hard drive whatever that is so what you want to do is you'd, you'd want to make a partition uh that will be used for caching so just right click onto that and select shrink volume uh what that will do is for example your two terabytes of ssd storage uh you click on the shrink volume and maybe just a lot a hundred gig i, I want to show it to you but i don't want to right now because it might interfere with my video recording so i use this one as my example so right click onto your ssd where windows installed into it with with uh with enough extra storage that you could allot for caching. So click on, let me just finish this real quick. So right click onto the SSD, shrink volume, it'll take a while, and maybe just allot 50 or 80 gigabytes. Yeah, 80 gigabytes, so 80,000 and then click on shrink you could do this on your booting bootable uh, partition and it won't it won't really uh, cause loss of files or whatnot and here it is so this one here is where your in windows is installed and this one here is the space you allotted for caching simple enough and yeah so and then uh, maybe in the future you want to expand it back to to its original size just select extend volume next and uh yeah so this one is the size we, uh the the shrunk size we used for caching right but we changed our mind we deleted that partition and we want to put it back to the original partition just make sure it's selected and click on next and then finish and it'll go back to its original partition so that's that let me delete this volume again to okay so now we're back to my original configuration i have my windows installed to my 5400 rpm hard drive which is here and i want to use my uh, small capacity ssd the lot of it for caching and I'll make a new simple volume and oh and by the way um, 
it's not a good idea to 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 use the maximum capacity of your solid state drive as you may know uh it will uh, shorten its lifespan uh, or uh it won't give you a reliable speed or fast enough speed it'll perform better if uh there's an extra bit of storage left in its uh volume in its uh entirety so i have here uh, 11 one approximately 120 gigabytes what's 20 percent of that let's i want to be precise so we have 11 four four seven two minus twenty percent eleven four four seven two yeah so ninety one five seven seven gigabytes so nine one five seven seven let's make it eighty so I'm allotting ninety one five eighty gigabytes for my caching and I spared twenty percent of it for extra storage so next assign letter d new volume finish so i'd be using 89.43 gigabytes for my l2 cache later on so that's prepared already now we'd be launching primo cache here it is now um the first button here it would make sense if, if, to click on that right away right but not in this case um first want to click on options here and make sure to launch the gui uh, application at windows start and i don't want to get these messages uh, every time it it uh finishes the task successfully it'll prompt you uh i find that irritating so i i uh Take that as well and click on OK and pri this one here is create a new cache task if you if I click on this right away uh, it'll handle my L1 caching uh, right away without my L2 cache so for simplicity we'll start with L2 then work our way back up L2 cache level 2 storage we have to create one first and here it's asking which one you'd want to use for l2 caching i'd want to use the new volume d that we created earlier and this one's the label here l2 storage click on format do you want to continue yes i do now level 2 storage is, has been created now it's here already click on x now let's create a cache task now uh, on the sideline first um, if you have uh, your windows installed onto your SSD and you have a hard drive installed to it let's say you have SSD for your primary where Windows is installed and you have another spare SSD a hard drive uh, a hard drive with two partitions and another ssd for the heck of it now obviously you just want to cache the the two partitions which are on the hard drive right so just check on that if you check a lot of them uh number one it'll eat a lot of your ram uh, for your l1 caching and two doesn't really make sense uh it's already running fast as it is so no need to cache uh the other ssd drives so you just want to cache the two partitioned hard drives uh that are on a hard drive uh we'll just stick to that all right and in my case uh okay going back now to our current configuration windows on my hard drive ssd as my l2 cache if you're running windows 10 you have most that uh most probably you have three partitions uh the first two are for your extra files uh that's needed to run your uefi and windows 10 os and the other one is your local disk c now if you have another partition in your hard drive and you want to get 
if, and you want to increase the performance of it, uh, you may want to put a check mark on that one as well. So most probably, if that's your situation, you'd have local disk C here and your another partition here for the hard drive. You you may place a check mark on that one as well. But in my case, it's only the C. So I'm placing a check mark on my C drive or my C partition. Okay, I clicked on next. Now I have L1 cache and L2 cache. If I leave it alone, I'm letting Primo cache do the calculation. I only have 16 gigabytes of RAM and I'm using this computer for video editing as well. And it, uh, it uses a lot of memory. So I don't, want, I don't really wanna give six gigs of RAM for caching. So I will be lowering it to two gigabytes. Now, uh, if you have like four gigabytes of RAM installed to your computer, um, what's the lowest here, 1024? but you're already running it very low as it is. So I'd recommend if, you only, if you're only running with four gigs of RAM, better put this to zero. And, but if you're eight gigs, if you have eight gigs of RAM, 1024 may be a good idea. Zero, if, if you're really not up to it. But in my case, I choose two gigs of RAM. And next one here is L2 cache. Uh, in my case, um, I already allotted 20% for extra storage, right? And the remaining is solely, its sole purpose is for caching. So that's what we did. I'm using maximum. Right now, I'm only uh, putting uh, extra performance in regards to caching with my SSD. I'm only putting extra performance for my read capability. Uh, why is that? I have L1, 2 gigs allotted for caching by my RAMs through L1, right? So it, I don't really have to uh, allot some of it for writing. I, I'm, I'm letting the RAMs do that for me. Now, uh, what, if, uh, what if this is the scenario you chose? Um, then it'd be a good idea to put it somewhere here, 50-50. Or maybe uh, you'd prefer it for reading, no, something like that. But me, 50-50 uh, is a good chance. If you prefer faster writing or whatever, you could adjust it, it's up to you. But in my case, since I have two gigabytes allotted uh, for caching by my RAM, here maybe, this one's good. Nah, I do it 50-50 for the heck of it. So that's there. Mm. There you go. And gather interval. Default. Uh, I can't really explain it. Um, next, preset configuration, uh, accelerate, read and write. Ah. Oh. That's a preset, so it... Okay, um, I, I'm back to uh, where I wanted to be. And prefetch, enable defer right first. What this thing here means is, I, I said earlier, if I wanna transfer some files in, onto my hard drive, it'll pass, through my, it'll pass through my L1 or L2 cache first, and then it'll transfer to my hard drive, right? If I increase this to 300 or even infinite, so what's happening there is it'll transfer it to my L1 or L2 cache first and then for fast, for fast processing and then when time permits or when the system permits, it'll transfer that onto your hard drive. Problem here is, uh, again, if you get power fluctuation or power outage or whatever, uh, you may get corrupted data, right? So, in, in my uh, uh, in my uh, my advice is just stick to ten. Um, it's pretty fast as it is, so ten is pretty good. And prefetch last cache start at Windows boot. And yeah, uh, what's this? Yep. 
cancel and start and it's done folks so that's all there is to it and you could exit this and we could try running some applications oh uh, by the way the thing with caching if it's the first time you'd be launching the application or uh, it's been a while since you last accessed that application it may take a while or take longer uh, for the application to launch because it's already erased into your ssd we have two types of caching volatile and non-volatile depending on your configuration most probably your rams are on the volatile side meaning when you turn your computer off uh, this thing's erased but with the non-volatile with the uh, non-volatile uh, files stored into your ssd for caching it stays there but it gets removed after a while so uh, that being said if I launch Netflix for the first time like what I'm doing now it's taking a while to load which is completely normal because uh, it's not recognized by the system still so I now uh, let's try to launch multiple applications let's see how well it handles yeah, I know it's for the first time, but it should be pretty quick still. I'll just launch whatever I have in mind. And it's still not... Let's launch this as well. Might as well uh, groove music. I haven't opened this ever. Uh, no. Yep, so I guess it's safe to say now my hard drive's performing like an SSD or my hard drive have an SSD-like performance. Uh, yeah, so that's it. I, I hope uh, this video helps someone and uh, hope you guys like it as well. And yeah, that's it. See you in the next video.